Hammer. Is she gonna pee on camera? Oh. <laughs> Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Starnard. Welcome to today's episode of It's Just a Joke. Just a joke, okay, it's just a joke. The title is a little click baby. I don't condone stealing from artists. That's not the point of this video. I think about a year ago, I did a video called Artists I Wanna Steal From and it's basically just me going through some of my favorite artists and talking about why I like them and what I want to learn from them and implement into my own practice. Throughout my time online, I've gotten quite a few questions asking who inspires me, who are my favorite artists, and my answer is always, Oh, just look at all the people I follow on Instagram. Um, but every once in a while, now being the second time, <laughs> I like to give specifics. So these are just a few of the artists that I like. Absolutely not an exhaustive list. Check out my Instagram follows for who else I enjoy, or check out the previous video for some of my other favorite artists. But yeah, all of the artists that I mentioned will be linked down below, so make sure you check them out. Um, if you don't know them already, maybe you do. Some of these are like big names, but I hope you find some new artists to support. Well, yeah, let's get started. Oh, also, I cannot guarantee that I can pronounce all of these names. I'm gonna do my best. I'm sorry if I mispronounce anything. I truly apologize. First up, we have Mark Maggiore, Maggiore uh, and he does a lot of Western art, which... <laughs> so his art is just, I mean, it's stunning. Like you're looking at it now and it's, it's stunning, you're stunned. Everything about everything he does. Like going through his Instagram, he has a lot of finished pieces, works in progress, but also sketches. And every single thing that he posts blows me away. So just looking at some of his work, um, like with the things that stand out, color, he has kind of a distinctive color palette, at least through most of his pieces. Uh, there's detail in every inch of his work. Every single part of it is covered in detail and care. Obviously, cowboys. Love me some cowboys. While I love everything that he does, specifically looking at his finished pieces, um, there's a lot of atmosphere. Like it feels like you're kind of in the middle of, of whatever they're doing. You're with them. You're in it with them. You're riding in the field of flowers. You're looking out at the sunset. It feels very real. Um, the composition is beautiful. There's a lot of like storytelling and emotion in each piece, um, which is amazing. Each individual piece, while having a lot of the same themes or being in a similar setting, feels unique and distinctive and it feels like you're there. There's also so much texture, again, with all of that detail, a lot of plants and nature and the clouds. It's crazy, like, how much texture is there. It makes it feel very real. It makes it feel tangible. Overall, <laughs> Mr. Mark here is just absolute career goals. He has such mastery of this traditional skill. Um, reading his about section on his website, he's got through quite a journey to get to where he is. Uh, and just everything about him, absolute career goals. Uh, I would love to make art like this one day, to have even a fraction of this skill storytelling ability, absolutely astounding. So what would I like to steal from him? Everything. Specifically this idea of kind of modern traditionalism, um, the way his pieces feel very much like the things that you would see in museums, but they're again, more like modern crisp and they feel a bit more real and raw. But again, just everything. <laughs> Next up we have Dina Brodsky. I think it's Dina, might be Dinah, I'm gonna go Dina. <laughs> Lately, uh, my Instagram has been filled with her reels of taking ink toned paper on like these like journal, like doodle pages and painting in those sketches with gouache. And it's stunning. I really wanna try that technique um, in general, like just the idea of working on anything like colored toned uh, really intrigues me. I did it like one time I painted it on cardboard and, and I was like, oh my God, I get why people are obsessed. Haven't done it since, but she makes me wanna do it again. It also really inspires me to just take those like little like doodles, journals, those like little smaller bits of your sketchbook and incorporate them into more finished pieces. Her skill with gouache is just to die for. Like there's this delicateness and like this, she gets these tiny, it's crazy, it's crazy. I love her birds, um, but in general, it's really surprising to me that I, I resonate with her art so much, that it speaks to me so much because a lot of her subjects aren't things that usually interest me. But it's specifically like the storytelling with each piece that she does that really like speaks to me, I think. Not only with the reels, the way she kind of shows the process, but also like each piece being, specifically her, her sketchbook, like little gouache pieces. Um, not only do they feel like they have the story behind them, but when you see like her journal pages, like obviously there is a story behind them. And I think that's really, really cool. Overall from Miss Brodsky, I would love to learn that ability to create something so beautiful and delicate from these rough little sketches or from like seemingly nothing, from these little doodles, from notes to herself. Also her plain air abilities and overall that just creativity and skill with gouache. Next, another thing I probably can't pronounce, Will Rockford. 
He definitely has a lot of that old Americana, Norman Rockwell vibes, which I love. Norman Rockwell is one of my favorite artists. I take a lot of inspiration from him, so love this. Again, such like skill and mastery with like traditional medium in a way that feels like slightly more modern um, and a bit more like real and raw. I think because I've been dipping my toes in a bit more with the oil, these artists that work so well with traditional mediums have really, really been speaking to me. So on his Instagram, he shows a lot of his process of setting up reference photos, taking like friends, family, uh, people that he knows, I'm assuming, setting them up in this situation and taking the reference photo and then turning that into his art. Um, and like what he changes and what he keeps and what he's using and what he's not. And I find it so interesting and so inspiring because like that is right where I wanna be with my relationship to references. I wanna be able to use them in a way that is totally mine and it is not directly relying on references. So that is definitely one thing that I want to one day be able to steal from him is his, his use of references. I also love his use of color. A lot of times he goes pretty dark uh, with a lot of contrast. There's usually a lot of contrast, which I love. A lot of interesting lighting. And again, a lot of atmosphere and a lot of storytelling. A lot of these pieces are someone in a situation, you know what I mean? You're in the middle of, of a room, of a scenario. And again, there's so much detail in every little inch of his pieces there. I love how sometimes crowded things are and cluttered things feel. I absolutely love that. Again, career goals. <laughs> Then we have Carolina Romanowska. Miss Romanowska is obviously doing something very different than the other artists I've already talked about. It's sculpture, but it's not something that I do. And it's also just visually very, very different. These masks are so beautiful. I love them. I love them so much. She's actually someone that I just recently found and I have been obsessed ever since. There is so much going on with each mask. Each one feels so unique and like there's so much time put into each one. Each one has so much emotion and personality and it's amazing. I love the use of color and patterns. There's this feeling of like controlled chaos that I absolutely love. They evoke so much emotion. They're expressing so much emotion. It's, it's crazy like how much is packed into each mask. What I would love to steal from her is like, that ability to like be so expressive and to use those patterns in a way that like help express that. I would also love to steal that idea of controlled chaos and using a lot of those colors and patterns that are so different and using them harmoniously. Then we have an old favorite, Ruth Spear or September Wildflowers. I have been in love with her work <laughs> for a long time. I don't remember when I found her, but I just, for a long time, I've been absolutely obsessed with her. It's another person that like everything they do, including like those little sketches and doodles, I absolutely love. Everything is packed with so much storytelling, so many like motifs from fairy tales and storybooks. Every one of her pieces feels very deep rooted and authentic, like deep rooted in like some idea, even if you can't quite identify it. Again, with her stuff, there's a lot of storytelling, um, a lot of visual clutter, so much detail, a lot of stuff going on. She jam packs her stuff, maybe not necessarily with symbolism, but with like so much thought. Like there is a lot of purposeful elements going into her pieces. On both Instagram and YouTube, she shares a lot of her process with her bigger pieces and she puts so much research and planning and thought into everything. And that is, so, I find that so inspiring because I want to, but I don't. She also has insane skill. Just overall, she really inspires me to like, I, I wanna make big pieces like this, big meaningful pieces that take time and energy and intention. Next up, I again, don't know if I'll pronounce this correctly, Noosh Shell is their Instagram handle. Their art has a lot of like whimsical fantasy feel, um, not necessarily like visual elements, sometimes there are, but just like that feel, that very whimsical, magical feeling. Their art is very stylized, very stylized and simplified, yet it feels very like grounded in reality. Like it feels realistic. Like they have all the correct proportions and everything, but it's so stylized and simplified. And I love that. It feels very detailed. Like when you really look at it, it's really not like that intricate. It's not that detailed. There's not that much like line work, but from afar, everything feels so intricate and so detailed. There's lots of color. There's always a cool lighting element or a very cool perspective. I also love like the use of backgrounds and environment. It's not like there's like a specific environment that the characters are interacting with, but it's never just like forgotten about. And again, there's just so much storytelling in each piece. Like even just a character in the bush. It's like, well, why are they there? Like there's so much going on and it's so intriguing and it feels like so whimsical. I love it. Some things that I would specifically like to steal, I would love to steal that idea of simplifying the style, but still making it feel realistic. Their use of backgrounds and settings, making them useful and purposeful, but not necessarily being interacted with. 
and creating that whimsical feeling. Next up, we have Elliot Baum, who again is somewhat of a recent find. There are definitely appeals to the stylized, wants to make a comic side of me as an artist. Like obviously this is very different from the other like traditional artists that I've been talking about, but this is an artist whose account I just keep going back to and staring at and thinking like, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I love the limited color palettes. Like each piece is definitely limited to a specific set of colors even if it doesn't quite feel like that at first. Some are quite obviously a color palette, some aren't, they feel a little bit more organic, but there's definitely a color palette and it feels so cohesive and natural. I also just love the style, like the style itself, like that's goals, dude, that is goals. <laughs> I really struggle with simplifying and moving away from realism. And this like captures realism so well, yet is clearly so simplified. This is a continuation from a lot of the artists from the last video where I did this. Uh, but I would love to find a digital style that really like balances realism and stylized. And this is like the perfect example of what I would like to achieve. And again, there's so much storytelling in each piece. Obviously some are panels from comics, so they are quite literally telling a story. But even the other ones, like there's so much emotion and movement and emotion. And there's so, like, there's so much to tell you and to see. Besides the main subject of each piece, there's also a lot of like other little details, either interacting with it or like in the background in the setting to continue that movement, but also add that like delicateness and detail. And overall it feels really detailed and intricate, but like it's actually like not, like it's actually pretty simple. There's a lot of um, distinction between the background and the main elements where there's more detail and less detail, but it's like it all feels so detailed. Also the composition and movement in each piece is absolutely insane. I would love to learn from their ability to compose pieces. So what would I like to steal? Definitely color palettes. I don't like to go this limited, but I think a few exercises like this could be really cool. Like I said, composition and also like style. Like obviously not stealing the style, like literally, but learning from the way they simplify, which features, things like that, I think would be really helpful to help me figure out what I want to do. Next up, we have Emily or Art with M on YouTube. I'm sure you know her. Her art is so good. I have been so obsessed. In fact, I literally have some of her prints with me right here. <laughs> All of her pieces have this not quite childlike feel, but they feel very whimsical. And again, like that storybook feeling. Also like watching her process is just insane. Like the way she like literally pieces things together is so, like that is not how my brain works. It's insane to watch. Despite the fact that so much thought goes into a lot of her work, everything ends up with this very like loose creative feeling, which I love. I would love to be able to achieve that. And like I said, she does a lot of planning and prep. Um, she shows some videos where she like, for school or for her own personal project, she puts a lot of work into everything. Again, don't do, would, would love to one day do that. <laughs> she also just has an insane eye for color and composition, which I think is best shown in her collages. I don't know how she does those collages, it's crazy. I think, I don't know her, but I'm assuming she must have a very analytical mind to be able to break things down in that way because it's it's not like any other process I've ever seen before. Overall, just very impressive. What would I like to steal from Emily? Just overall, the creativity, the ability to make everything feel so whimsical and magical. And also that like love that comes through with every piece and the fact that all of her pieces, like you can tell that there's a perspective. Like I can tell it's her and it's her perspective. And I would love to have that distinct quality in my art. Last but certainly not least, Noah or Noah Dia dot art on Instagram. His art has captured my heart for a very long time. First of all, queer artist, we stand. <laughs> One thing that has drawn me from his art at the beginning is the very limited color palettes, but like it's a color family really. It's not even a color palette, but everything has this very distinct like tone and it's so visually stunning. And despite a lot of his pieces being within the same tone, um, it still feels real, very realistic and very saturated and interesting. A lot of his pieces have a lot going on. Again, that idea of visual clutter, there's lots of elements, lots of little details. Every piece has amazing composition and when characters are together, the interactions between them are so natural and it looks so good. There's almost always some really cool lighting element, which I love. A lot of artists, we, we love a good rim lighting, you know, good, good lighting element, harsh shadows, we love. Again, that digital style of being very stylized, but feeling so realistic. How could these artists do this? Even the elements within the pieces outside of the figures, there's this mixing of stylized and realism, which is so impressive because it feels so together. Like it doesn't feel like there's a distinction between them. 
Again, storytelling and pieces. Every piece is either it's a person in a situation, there's something going on, they're in the middle of something, or it's characters who are in the middle of interacting and there's a relationship between them. All of his pieces are just so stunning. Uh, what would I like to steal from him? That painterly quality in his stylized figures, love. The harmonious color palettes, everything having that similar tone. Ah. Also just an amazing grasp on anatomy. Would love to steal that. <laughs> in the process of picking out uh, these artists to talk about and going through their art and figuring out what about them I like so much, actually it was very enlightening. A lot of these artists have a lot of things in common and it was very easy to like pick out what I think I could work on in my own art. Like doing this, gave me very specific things to work on, and that is very exciting. So overall, what can I learn from these incredible artists? What would I like to adapt into my own art? What am I looking for that I feel is lacking in my art? One, storytelling. All of these artists had incredible storytelling. Characters weren't just sitting there. It wasn't just a three-quarter portrait. Things were happening. There was interaction. There was movement. There was a situation happening. There was a story to be told. I want to start thinking about, like, what do I want my art to say? Not the meaning behind it, but what do I literally want to say? What do I want my story to be? What do I want each piece's story to be? Even just, like, literally, like, what do I want to look for in everyday things? Like, when I'm going book shopping, looking for reference books, what kind of books do I want to look for that I can reference to put into my art? Do you know what I mean? Things like architecture, nature, local stuff. Like, what do I want to be putting into my art? Also, what does that mean for composition and background elements? Things like that. Things that I've always struggled with. I think putting it into this context of what story do I want to tell will actually make that a lot easier to figure out. Also, I think it's pretty clear that I want to put more planning into my work. As I'm working on doing more original stuff, I want to work on actually putting thought into it, making it mean something, making it tell a story, and also just upping the quality in general, which will require doing planning and preparation like a lot of these great artists do. I also want to start putting more thought into my colors, maybe even like making my own distinct color palette. I don't have to use it all the time. I love color and I love experimenting with color, so I don't want to limit myself too much. But like looking at all of these artists, especially like the pieces that I pulled to reference while making this video, the collection of the pieces have a distinct color palette. Noah's is very like orange and red. Emily's is very green. Elliot's is very blue. <laughs> New Chanchelle, green, yellow. Ruth is very like yellow ochre. Picking a color that could kind of represent me throughout my work could be really beneficial. And also just experimenting with very limited color palettes, like a four color palette in digital art, I think could get me a long way in feeling more comfortable there. Another thing a lot of these artists utilize is visual color and fine detail, which I already love, but I don't think I do enough in my own work, especially because I tend to stick to like one subject with a flat color background. I think if I start implementing a lot of that visual clutter, it could help it feel a bit more mine. And finally, I think I need to keep trying with digital. I keep wanting to give up, but then I keep finding these artists who do this amazing digital work that really inspires me. So I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> I genuinely feel like I learned a lot. I suggest that you do this kind of thing. Like I made a Google doc, picked out some favorite pieces, put them together. Seeing it all laid out like this is actually so helpful for like my own art. So I definitely recommend trying this as an exercise. <laughs> but yeah, those are just a few of my favorite artists. Um, I hope that you found this video enjoyable and interesting. I found it very informative. I cannot wait to get started on some of these actionable items I have for myself. Make sure to check out all of the artists. Everything will be linked down below, websites, Instagrams, everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm gonna go eat lunch, so go eat some toast, go support an artist, and go do some art.